Let's talk about structural dissociation of the personality. This is a, a, a theory that was pioneered by Pierre Genet, Charles Samuel Myers, who was a World War I and World War II psychiatrist, and really developed by Anna Vanderhart, Ellen Nainhaus, and Kathy Steele. Pierre Genet said that trauma-related dissociation has to do with the tendency to the dissociation of emancipation of the systems of ideas and functions that constitute personality. Now that's just a brilliant statement. The emancipation of the system of ideas and functions that constitute personality. The way then that um, Charles Samuel Myers talked about it, he said that when the soldiers would come in after traumatizing, being traumatized on the battlefield, he said they would be reliving the trauma. He called this the emotional part because they would, they would be just flailing and hyper aroused, maybe screaming. But he said sooner or later, the person would get on with their normal life. They'd go back to fighting or they would go home to their wife or children. And that daily life, part of themselves, however, was never integrated with the part that had been uh, suffered the trauma. So if we think of this in terms of some parts experiencing too much of the trauma, some parts experiencing too little of the trauma, it starts to make sense. When we're a traumatized person is engaged in their daily life, they're really pushing the trauma away. When they start to relive their trauma, they're experiencing too much. If we think of this in terms of psychobiological system, it's really a, a split between our animal defensive systems whose job it is to protect ourselves from harm and make us safe. There's a different goal with our animal defenses that are called forth in trauma. When we're in our daily lives, there's a very different goal of, of those, again, psychobiological systems such as attachment, exploration, sociability, sexuality, reproduction. Those systems have to do with exploring your environment, connecting with others, and you need a degree of safety to be able to do that. So these two systems of animal defense connected with the trauma have one goal, and the other systems that have to do with daily life have another goal. So for a trauma survivor, those two general categories are not integrated. We want to work with that somatically in sensory motor psychotherapy. It's very important when we're working with the body, especially with trauma and with dissociative patterns, is that we are aware of how different parts of the self are embodied, what gestures, postures, and movements go along with different parts of the self, and that we don't um, override one part of the self in favor of another. For example, I have one client who severe, severe trauma, and her body was, this is how she sat, her body was just like this, she was so tight, she had so many physical ailments, and she said that she just wanted to open up, and she found this gesture of opening, and her spine got long, and her body opened. It was a lovely, lovely gesture, but if you're not aware of how dissociative parts live in the body, you might just think that that was great and she should just be sent home with this new gesture to practice. However, that gesture overrides the part of her that was so tight and frightened, like this, right? So, we had to integrate those two parts somatically. And what she found was she said that when she is open like this, she feels like she could be hurt again. She feels too exposed. So the gesture she found to also um, speak to that part of her was crossing her arm over her body. Then she was able to maintain an aligned posture and an open posture because she hadn't overridden this part of herself that was so frightened. So we found a way that she could be in her body in a way that integrated both these parts rather than overriding one of them. And this is essential uh, because if you override a part, that part often then will get stronger and come out in, in destructive uh, and maladaptive ways. 
I want to talk about the difference between tra trauma and attachment. Um, because this was a very important learning for me, because uh, when I grew up psychotherapeutically, I grew up with an attachment-focused therapy. I was working with relationships, with um, belief systems, with, with strong emotions that are connect associated with attachment relationships. I didn't really understand trauma very well. This was in the, the 70s. Um, and I was working with uh, young college students um, because I was a referral for the clinic at University of Colorado for women who were having sexual problems, couldn't really enjoy sex. Uh, and the techniques that I was working with really were not effective. And I began to think about that and realize that all these women had been sexually abused and that they needed something different from the relational and emotional interventions that I had been taught. That was really my first education about trauma. Um, and so I, I started working with just helping these young women stay in their bodies. I didn't, wasn't working with strong emotions, et cetera, that often took them way out of their window of tolerance. And I started to think about the difference between trauma and attachment wounds um, and came to, to understand that trauma really has to do with animal defenses that are stimulated in the face of threat and dysregulated arousal and that we need to work with unresolved trauma bottom up through the body. Attachment related issues have to do with relationship, with the, the emotions that are stimulated with the, the beliefs, like I'm not good enough, or I'm not lovable, or I'm never going to be um, able to be express myself. These beliefs that we learn in the context of relationship, and they also, that also shape our bodies, right? So I, I started really thinking about the different interventions that belong to trauma and belong to attachment disturbances, which always overlap and interface. Um, but we'll be, we'll be taking a look in this workshop about how trauma interventions are different from relational attachment interventions.